Ladies, this season's two-piece play suits are bolder, briefer, exposing more skin. You'll want to be a bearskin beauty, beautiful all over. So get big bath size palm olive soap. Use it in tub and shower. Makes oceans of soft, lovely lather. Gives you Palm Olive's famous complexion care all over. See if regular cleansing with Palm Olive doesn't make your skin softer, smoother, more alluring. For bare skin beauty, get bath size Palm Olive soap today. Gentlemen, Dennis Day. Dennis Day is brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream and Luster Cream Shampoo. Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. The Dennis Day Show with Barbara Eiler, B. Benadera, Dink Trout, Charles Dant in the orchestra, and yours truly, Vern Smith, is written by Frank Galen and stars our popular young singer in A Day in the Life of Dennis Day. Here's Dennis to sing When the Red Red Robin Comes Bob Bob Bobbin' Along. When the Red Red Robin Comes Bob Bob Bobbin' Along, Along. There'll be no more sobbing when he stops throbbing his old sweet song. Wake up, wake up, you sleepy head. Get up, get up, get out of bed. Cheer up, cheer up, the sun is red. Live, love, laugh, and be happy. What if I've been blue? Now I'm walking through fields of flowers. Rain may glisten, but still I listen for hours and hours. I'm just a kid again, doing what I did again, singing a song. When the red, red robin comes ba 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 What if I've been blue? Now I'm walking through fields of flowers. Rain may glisten, but still I listen for hours and hours. I'm just a kid again, doing what I did again, singing a song. When the red, red robin comes ba-ba-ba-bin Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. No other toothpaste does a better job of cleaning teeth than Colgate Dental Cream. For Colgate Dental Cream has a safe polishing agent that cleans your teeth both gently and thoroughly, brings out their natural sparkle and beauty. You can actually see and feel the difference. And scientific tests prove that Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Yes, actual scientific tests prove conclusively that in 7 out of 10 cases... Colgate's instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. Colgate Dental Cream is famous for its wonderful wake-up flavor, too. Nationwide tests of leading toothpastes prove that Colgate's is preferred for flavor over every other brand tested. Yes, preferred over every other brand tested. And no wonder. For Colgate Dental Cream is the result of constant effort to produce the finest toothpaste in the world for flavor, for sweetening breath. So see if you don't agree with the millions who have made Colgate Dental Cream America's favorite toothpaste. Try Colgate Dental Cream to bring out the natural sparkle and beauty of your teeth for a wake-up flavor you'll thoroughly enjoy. And always use Colgate Dental Cream after you eat and before every date to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. In his relatively short lifetime, our young hero, Dennis Day, has held a great many jobs. And up till now, no employer has ever accused him of helping business. But things may have changed. For yesterday, Dennis became a clerk in the Weaverville District Telegraph Office. And those who know him say this will not help one business, but two. The post office and the telephone company. 
Our young hero, however, is determined to make good. In fact, to become the greatest telegraph clerk in history. And he's now telling his girlfriend, Mildred, how he's going about it. You mean you don't send out the telegrams the way the customers write them, Dennis? Oh, I keep the sense of them all right. But you take one of the wires I got this afternoon. George fell off a horse today and broke both, an ar- both his arms. Naturally, a person who receives a message like that is going to be upset, so I try to mim- minimize it. Well, how? Well, I sent it out. George fell off a horse today and broke both, of the- both his arms, but don't worry. His legs are still working fine. <laughs> I see. Sure. Things like that are bound to call me to my boss's attention sooner or later. And wait till he hears about my big bargain wire. Your big bargain wire? Yeah. You know those telegrams you send a woman every time something important happens in her life? Well, I've made up one wire that covers everything. Save people a fortune. One wire that covers everything? Sure. It says, congratulations on your engagement, your son's graduation, your daughter's wedding, and happy golden anniversary, my dear widow. <laughs> Great, huh? Well, is that all you do, make up and edit telegrams? Oh, no. I also take all the incoming messages off the wires. Well, that doesn't sound too difficult. Well, right now, it's pretty confused. There's so much stuff coming over from the Republican convention, it's getting mixed up with the other messages. Oh, really? Yeah. One telegram read, Congratulations, Joe. Stop. You have just become the father of twins. Do you sure of 18 in Oregon? I hope you straightened it out. Oh, sure. I sent Dewey a telegram that he'd had twins in Oregon. That's all. Joe? <laughs> and the other wire read, You have just become the father of 18. Joe, stop. Oh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Here I am talking away, and I nearly forgot what I came home for. I got a telegram here for your mother. A wire for mother? Oh, golly, it must be from her niece and nephew in Los Angeles. They were expecting a baby. Yeah, and if I remember the telegram correctly, that's what they got. Well, you better give that wire to Mother right away. She's been waiting to hear all week. Okay. I'll see you later. Oh, hi, Mrs. Anderson. Mr. Anderson. Oh, hello, Dennis. Good morning, my boy. I got a wire for you, Mrs. Anderson, from your nephew in Los Angeles. Oh, at last. Give it to me. Little Susan arrived this morning, seven pounds, six ounces. Stassen says it's time for a change. <laughs> Oh, it's that darn convention news sneaking in again. It's just a mistake, Mrs. Anderson. Oh. Well, isn't it just marvelous, Herbert? Bill and Henrietta have a little girl. Yeah. I hope they didn't have the trouble that we did when Mildred was born. Remember, for a while, the doctor was afraid he might lose me. <laughs> yes, but we managed to pull you through. <laughs> Oh, my, isn't this exciting? We've just got to buy little Susan things for her layette. Herbert, we'll use the $50 we've saved up. Why, Poopsie, that $50 was supposed to buy that new suit I need so badly. Herbert, you don't want your new little grandniece to go naked, do you? She'll attract a lot less attention that way than I will. (laughs) Nonsense. Hand me my purse. Dennis, do you think you can run an errand for me and for once in your life get it straight? Why not? It baffles you too, huh? (laughs) All I want you to do is this. Take the time and go down and with this $50 bill to 314 10th Street. 314 10th Street? Yes. It's a new baby shop that's just opened. I'll phone them and order everything and tell them you'll be in with the money. Okay. The address again is 314 10th Street. And it's for Susan Quincy's layette. Can you remember that? Oh, Mrs. Anderson, you know me. This once surprised me. (laughs) Come along, Herbert. Huh, always making cracks about me. Thinks I'm some kind of a dope. Thinks I can't remember a simple name like Susan Quincy and a simple address like 310 14th Street. I'll show her someday. This is sure some town Big Sam picked out for us, Pinky. A bookie could starve to death in a bag like this. Well, keep your shirt on, Duke. Nobody knows yet that we're taking horse bets here. Wait till the word gets around. We'll get action. Yeah, but when is it going to start? So far, we ain't had Hey, no... anybody here? Gee, could that be a customer out front? I'm here about the lay yet. Oh, you hear that, Pinky? He wants to lay a bet. <laughs> Didn't I tell you we'd get action soon? Coming, pal. Now, what can I do for you, bud? Uh, this is uh, 310 14th Street, isn't it? Yeah, you're in the right place, pal. Good. Here's the $50. 
Fifty, eh? Okay. On who? I beg pardon? What's the name of the entry? Oh, Susan Quincy. Uh, Susan Quincy. Oh, yeah, here it is in the form, only it's uh, just listed as Susie Q. <laughs> Susie Q, huh? Yeah, she's the first at Hollywood. Oh, really? I thought that sort of thing was going on out there all the time. <laughs> How do you want her, pal? Huh? Well, do you want her to show? Oh, no, that's why I gave you the $50. <laughs> then you want her to go on the front end. I want her to go on both of them. <laughs> she might get in a draft or something. In other words, you want her to cross. Sure, cross around everywhere. Personally, I don't think she's got a chance, kid. Not with the kind of handicap she's faced with today. Oh, you know her parents? Well, no. Uh, she's got pretty good bloodlines. Oh, the best. Her father spent four years in Harvard, and her mother came from Wellesley. <laughs> Harvard and Wellesley? Never heard of. Must be trotting tracks. <laughs> What Duke is trying to tell you, kiddo, is that according to the dope, that baby is a terrific long shot. Oh, I know. I understand her family never even expected her mother to get married. <laughs> Don't you mean mated? Sure, if you want to call it that. Well, anyway, her mother was nearly 30 and she hadn't even met anyone yet. 30? Why, they, they generally meet them when they're around six. Six? Sure. I certainly never heard of anyone waiting past eight or nine. Gee, I guess I traveled with a... Well, there, there ain't no use discussing it any further. Your dough is up, and you got yourself a deal. Well, I'll drop back in on my way home from work and pick up the bundle. Pretty sure of yourself, huh? If you ask me, you'll find this Susie Q pulled up in a stretch. Oh, that's ridiculous. Who ever heard of anyone wearing one of those at her age? Come on. Oh, hi, Mr. Anderson. Take care of that layup order for Poopsie, all right? Oh, sure, nothing to it. Those salesmen in that store are two of the nicest fellows I ever met. Uh, fellows? Why, the salespeople in that shop are all women. Oh, really? Gee, they had me fooled completely. <laughs> Dennis, uh, what address did you go to? 310 14th Street, just like Mrs. Anderson said. 310 14th Street? Why, she said 314 10th Street. You mean I made a mistake? What'll I do? Well, as I see it, you've got a choice between a head start and a head stone. <laughs> Boy. What kind of a store was it? Can you describe it? Well, there were just these two men in the back sitting at a desk. One of them was reading a newspaper called The Racing Form, and he was... Oh, my soul and body, Dennis. You gave that money to a couple of bookmakers. Oh, my gosh, and it'll be at least six years before little Susan learns to read. <laughs> Don't sell books. It's a horse parlor. Don't be silly. There wasn't a horse in the place. <laughs> Dennis, don't you understand? You bet Poopsie's $50 on a horse. You mean I... I... Oh, my gosh. So that's what Susie Q is. Now, you've got to call those men this minute and tell them to cancel that bet. Yeah, and I don't even know their number. See, maybe Miss Baker will help me out. Thank goodness she's our operator. Hello? Hello? Hello, Miss Baker. This is Dennis. Look, you got to connect me with a store at 310 14th Street. It's a matter of life and death. In both cases, mine. <laughs> yeah, gee, thanks, Miss Baker. That's a break. Yeah. Hello? Say, this is the fellow who was just in and made that $50 bet. It seems I made a mistake, so I'd like to cancel the... Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Yeah, but, but... Yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 but... <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah. Well? They said a bet was a bet, and if I tried to get out of it, I'd find myself in the river some dark night. What can I do, Mr. Anderson? You know how easily I catch cold. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't pleasant to have a cold in your head, and your head in a block of cement. <laughs> yeah, they aren't even handling the bet themselves because they haven't got that much money. They said they're phoning it in to someone called Big Sam over in Middletown. 
Oh, if we could only think of some way to keep that phone call from getting through, then the bet would be off. Well, you know that's impossible, Mr. Anderson. The only chance we has, have if, is, is if Susie Q wins the race. Well, do you think she possibly can, Dennis? Gee, I don't know. Let's have a look at that paper and see how the experts rate her. Yeah, yeah, here. Let's see. First race at Hollywood Park. Waterman, very foy. Good early speed from game. Excellent morning workouts. Red sunset, speed and plenty of courage. Susie Q has bushy tail. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and as I just said, our only chance is to keep that phone call from going through. We'll be back in just a moment to continue our day in the life of Dennis Day. Meanwhile, here's Dennis to sing Dolores. I love the kisses of... I, 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 Dolores. Not Marie or Emily or Doris. Oh! But she is twice as lovely as the rose she throws. I would die to be with my Dolores. I, 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 Dolores. I was made to serenade Dolores. Imagine eyes like moonrise, a voice like music, and lips like wine. What a break if I could make to Lauren. started when Mrs. Anderson gave Dennis $50 to buy a layout for her grandniece, and he betted on a horse by mistake. Now the only chance he has is to keep the bet from being phoned into the bookie in Middletown. Luckily, his spinster friend, Miss Baker, who has quite a crush on him, is the local telephone operator. So Dennis has just dropped down to the exchange to see what he could do about tying up the phones. Why, Dennis, what are you doing here? Oh, I just dropped in to thank you for getting me that number, Miss Baker. It sure was nice of you. Oh, it was nothing. Uh, sit down, darling. <laughs> sit down. Uh, right here on this stool. But you're already sitting on it. Yes, I know. <laughs> Miss Baker, please. This is a place of business. Of course, and that's just what I mean. <laughs> Come on, you gorgeous thing. Oh, now, Miss Baker, I'm no different than hundreds of other attractive men, and you know it. <laughs> Oh, but you are. If I had a dozen boyfriends, I'd look at you the same way. Really? Yes, of course, I might be a little more relaxed about it. <laughs> Come on, sit down here. Oh, no. Gee whiz, you get me all embarrassed. <laughs> You're not embarrassed about sitting on that little Mildred Anderson's lap. I saw you last night. Miss Baker, you've been spying again. Oh, I have not. I just happened to be walking past your keyhole on my knees. <laughs> That explains those holes in the doormat. Well, I can't help it if I'm a little jealous. You've never taken me out even once since we met. Well, would you like a date with me tonight? Tonight? Oh, Dennis, do you mean it? Sure. Why don't you run over to the beauty parlor and get yourself all fixed up? I'll run your switchboard for you. Oh, you mean right now? Oh, why, wait. If you want to look attractive, you better start pretty early. <laughs> oh, but Dennis, I can't be... Oh, just a minute. I'll, I'll take this call. Hello? Middletown? Uh, yes, sir. Middletown, uh, quick, Miss Baker, to the beauty parlor. Hurry before they run out of eyelashes and hips and things. Quick. <laughs> Dennis, I have to... Go ahead, I'll take this call. Hurry or no date. Oh, well, I... Oh, all right. Here, take my headset. I'll, I'll see you later. Okay. 
Oh, my gosh. I've got to stop this call from going through. If he gets to Big Sam... Hello. Hello. Uh, did you just want your number, please? Yes, I want Middletown 333. Middletown 333? Three, three, three. Yeah, 333. Three. Uh, that number has been changed to Middletown 334. Three, okay, then give me Middletown 334. Three, three, that number has been changed to Middletown 433. <laughs> three. Then give me Middletown 433. Three, three. I'm sorry, there is no such number. <laughs> Operator, will you get me my party? This is important. I'm doing the best I can. Well, hurry, will you? I've got to get through to Big Sam. That name has been changed to Small Pete. <laughs> it has not. I want Middletown 333. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I'm connecting you with Pulaski 333. I don't want Pulaski. I want Middletown. Middletown. That name has been changed to Cincinnati. <laughs> I want Middletown three three three. Can't you get that through your head? Yes, sir. I'm ringing Hoboken nine nine nine. <laughs> You've got the wrong number. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll hang up. I mean, I got the wrong number. Okay, then you hang up. Please operate. I want Middletown three three three. Please. Please. I will connect you. Thank heaven. Here is your party. Hello, Big Sam? I'm sorry, your three minutes are up. <laughs> what? Kindly deposit $87 for three more minutes. Come <laughs> on! I'm going down to the telegraph office and send a wire. Goodbye! Oh, my gosh, the telegraph office. Where's my hat? <laughs> Oh, here he comes. Boy, I hope this eye shade hides enough of my face. If he recognizes hey, me... Hey, uh, Mister. Hey, Mister, you. Howdy, Bob. <sighs> I, uh, I want to send this wire to Middletown right away, immediately. You understand? Fast. No, no, don't get in a sweat, sonny. Keep your bull Durham dry. <laughs> Who's she going to? Sam Daniels. Hey, what's that last name? Daniels. Better spell it for me, sonny. All right. D A N. What's the first letter? D. D as in darling. D as in what? Didn't quite catch that. Darling. D A R. What's that letter after E? R. R like in return. Hey. Return. R E T. What'd you say? T. T as in tomorrow. How's that again? Tomorrow. T O M O R R O W. I didn't quite catch that last letter. W. Like in white. Hey. White. W-I-F-E. W-I-F what? E. Like in elope. E-L-O-P. Did you say... No, P like in plumber. Oh, plumber. Now I got it. I'll read your wire back. What wire? Darling, return tomorrow. Wife eloped with the plumber. <laughs> a straight wire or a night letter, Sonny? I don't want to send it at all. I'm taking the next train out of here and talk to the man myself. Goodbye! Oh, my gosh, the train. Well, what am I waiting for? I know Earl Welch, the station agent, pretty well. Where's my hat? Hey, hey, are you, are you the ticket agent? Yep, here I am. <laughs> Give me a ticket to Middletown, quick. Uh? I want a ticket to Middletown. Oh. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you crazy or something? That's the last train today, and it leaves in two minutes. Now, give me a ticket. Uh, what you going to Middletown for? See the Burlicue show? <laughs> None of your business. I went to the Burlicue show once, caught an awful cold. Look, the fellow in the back of me kept yelling, take it off. I didn't want to disappoint him. <laughs> look, look, I want a ticket to Middletown. Oh, yes, so you do, so you do, so you do. Uh, you want the green ticket or the red ticket? How do I know? Does it matter? Nope, they're both the same. <laughs> then give me a green ticket. A green ticket with a blue suit? You don't care how you look. 
Then give me a red suit. I mean a blue suit. I mean a... Give, give me a... I... I... Oh, my gosh, look. The train's pulling out. Yep, they will do that, you know. Oh. <laughs> you fool, now I can't get to Middletown. Do you realize you just cost me 50 bucks I'm going to have to give back? You don't say. Well, ain't that too bad. That's the fairest thing I ever heard. <laughs> and he returned Mother's $50 to you, Dennis? Sure, the bet was off. I outsmarted him. But I still may be in trouble with your mother, Mildred. I found out something when I got back to the telegraph office this evening. What? Well, I found out that... My gracious, did you children see the evening papers? No, why, Mother? Oh, if only I'd played a hunch today. Huh? Well, what do you mean? Well, this morning, Susan Quincy was born, and this afternoon, a horse named Susie Q won at Hollywood Park and paid over 200 to 1. Mildred, if you want to shoot me, I'll be glad to write a suicide note. <laughs> Oh, my golly, is that what you meant you found out at the telegraph office? No, I didn't know about that. But I found out that I delivered the wrong telegram to your mother this morning. What? Yeah, the wire I gave you was supposed to go to Mrs. Wilkins down the street. It was her sister that had the baby only in Chicago, not Los Angeles. But then what did my wire say? I'd rather not read it to you. Dennis Day, I want to know what was in that wire. Well, it says, just got a sure thing tip on a horse. If you have any spare cash, take it all and bet it on Susie Q in the first race at Hollywood. Sign your nephew, Bill. <laughs> Dennis Day will be back in just one minute to sing Blue Shadows on the Trail. But first... Dream girl, dream girl. Cream girl, hair that gleams and luster cream shampoo. Yes, for soft, glamorous dream girl hair, try luster cream tubes or jars, whichever you prefer. Luster cream, the new three-way loveliness, fragrantly clean, glistening with sheen, soft, easy to manage. Not a soap, not a liquid, but an utterly new, rich lathering cream shampoo, a blend of secret ingredients plus lanolin. Four ounce jar, one dollar. For jars, 49 and 25 cents. Be a dream girl, a lovely dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. Well, as Jack Benny would say, we're a little late, folks. Good night. week, tune in to another Dennis Day show brought to you by Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous dream girl hair. This is Vern Smith speaking. Good night. Good night.